Something extraordinary is happening in astronomy right now, and most people have no idea how big it really is. The James Webb Space Telescope is no longer just confirming what we already suspected, it is actively breaking the limits of what we thought was possible. In just a short span of time, Webb has uncovered planets that should not exist, atmospheres that should not survive, galaxies that should not have formed yet, and chemical signatures that push uncomfortably close to the question of life beyond Earth. And no, this is not about K218b. What Webb is seeing goes far deeper than a single planet. Piece by piece, discovery by discovery, a pattern is emerging, and that pattern suggests the universe is far stranger, far more active, and far more creative than our models ever allowed. Tonight, we are going to follow those discoveries step by step, because by the end of this story, you may realize that the unimaginable is no longer theoretical. It is already being observed. One of the first cracks in our understanding comes from a planet that, on paper, makes no sense at all. TOI 4507b is a gas giant roughly the size of Jupiter, yet its density is dramatically lower than anything we expect for a planet of that scale. It is bloated, inflated, and inexplicably light, like a cosmic balloon that should have collapsed long ago. But what truly unsettles astronomers is not its size, it is its orbit. TOI 4507b moves around its star at an inclination close to 90 degrees, meaning its orbit is almost perpendicular to the star's rotation. That kind of configuration does not happen gently. It suggests a violent past involving extreme gravitational interactions or catastrophic orbital migration. And yet, the planet is too far from its star for stellar heating to explain its swollen state. The James Webb Telescope is now analyzing its atmosphere in detail trying to understand what could possibly keep such a massive world so unnaturally light. Already, this single planet is forcing scientists to admit that something fundamental about planetary evolution is missing from our equations. As shocking as strange planets are, Webb's discoveries do not stop there. When it turned its gaze to the early universe, it found something even more problematic. Supermassive black holes, already fully formed and actively consuming matter, appearing just 500 to 570 million years after the Big Bang. Objects like those found in galaxies such as Sears LRDZ9 and Canucks LRD8 possess masses hundreds of millions of times that of our Sun. According to standard cosmology, there simply wasn't enough time for black holes to grow that large through conventional processes. These discoveries suggest that black holes may form directly from the collapse of massive gas clouds, bypassing the slow, step-by-step -step growth we once believed was mandatory. In other words, Webb is showing us that the universe learned how to build giants almost immediately. And if that is true, then much of what we thought we knew about cosmic evolution needs to be rewritten. Webb's revelations continue closer to home, with worlds so extreme they sound almost fictional. Take WASP-18b, an ultra-hot gas giant orbiting its star so closely that its atmosphere reaches temperatures where water literally boils into vapor instantly. Using advanced spectroscopy during planetary eclipses, Webb achieved something never done before, a three-dimensional map of an exoplanet's atmosphere. What it revealed was astonishing, supersonic winds ripping across the planet, redistributing heat from the scorching day side to the night side, creating one of the most complex atmospheric systems ever observed. This is more than a curiosity. It represents the beginning of a new era where alien atmospheres can be modeled in detail, not imagined. And Webb didn't stop there. It also detected a dense atmosphere around TOI-561b, a super-Earth orbiting extremely close to its star. According to previous models, such a planet should have lost its atmosphere long ago. Yet it hasn't. That single observation forces scientists to reconsider how resilient planetary atmospheres can be, even in environments once considered completely hostile. Perhaps the most disturbing discoveries come from Webb's observations of the early universe itself. The telescope has identified a spiral galaxy, already well-structured and mature, existing just 100 million years after the Big Bang. This should be impossible. Galaxies are supposed to take far longer to form such organized shapes. Either the universe began earlier than we think, or there is an unknown mechanism that accelerates cosmic structure formation dramatically. And then came the discovery of the oldest known supernova associated with a gamma-ray burst, 
exploding only 730 million years after the Big Bang, dispersing the first heavy elements into space. These elements are essential for planets, chemistry, and eventually life. Webb is not just showing us distant objects. It is showing us that the universe became complex far faster than we ever imagined. And that realization sets the stage for something even bigger. As James Webb kept pushing deeper into hostile environments, it began uncovering planets that simply should not be able to exist in their current state. Around neutron stars and pulsars, objects once thought to be completely sterilizing, Webb and complementary observatories have confirmed planets that somehow survived the violent supernova explosions that created those remnants. These worlds endured radiation bursts capable of shredding atoms, shockwaves that should have ejected any nearby material, and gravitational chaos that normally tears planetary systems apart. And yet, they remain. Even more unsettling, some of these planets appear to retain atmospheres or surface materials that indicate long-term stability. This forces astronomers to confront an uncomfortable truth. Planetary resilience is far greater than we ever allowed for. If planets can survive the death of a star, then the line between habitable and uninhabitable environments becomes far more blurred than our models ever suggested. One of the most disruptive discoveries made possible by Webb is the growing list of exoplanets that retain thick atmospheres under conditions where atmospheric loss should be inevitable. Super-Earths orbiting extremely close to their stars, bathed in intense radiation, were expected to be stripped down to bare rock. Instead, Webb has detected atmospheres rich in heavy molecules, suggesting powerful retention mechanisms or continuous replenishment from planetary interiors. This implies that planets are not passive victims of their stars, but active systems capable of maintaining equilibrium far longer than expected. Volcanism, magnetic fields, and deep reservoirs of gas may play a much larger role in planetary survival than previously believed. The implication is staggering. Planets once dismissed as dead worlds may still possess dynamic, evolving environments beneath their hostile exteriors. Webb's spectroscopic power has revealed chemical combinations in exoplanet atmospheres that should not coexist for long periods of time. Methane appearing alongside carbon dioxide, sulfur compounds persisting under extreme heat, and water vapor surviving intense stellar radiation all point to active chemical cycles rather than static compositions. In equilibrium, these molecules should rapidly destroy or transform one another. Their persistence implies constant replenishment or regulation, processes that keep atmospheres chemically out of balance. This is a crucial point, because chemical disequilibrium is one of the strongest indicators of dynamic systems. While this does not mean life, it does mean activity. It means planets that are not chemically frozen, but constantly evolving, reacting, and reshaping themselves in ways that push far beyond our previous assumptions. Taken together, these discoveries begin to erode the traditional concept of the habitable zone. For decades, habitability was defined narrowly, a thin ring around a star where liquid water could exist on a planet's surface. Webb is showing us that this framework is far too limited. Worlds outside this zone retain atmospheres. Worlds inside it may be far more extreme than expected. And worlds once thought completely hostile may still support complex chemistry. Habitability, it turns out, may not be a location, but a spectrum. A sliding scale of conditions where chemistry, energy, and time interact in ways we are only beginning to understand. And if that is true, then the number of potentially interesting worlds in our galaxy does not increase by a small factor. It explodes. As James Webb continued dissecting exoplanet atmospheres molecule by molecule, scientists began noticing something that quietly set off alarm bells. Certain planets were showing chemical combinations that should not persist unless something was actively maintaining them. In stable conditions, gases like methane and carbon dioxide destroy each other over relatively short timescales. They react, transform, and disappear. And yet, Webb kept finding them together, coexisting in atmospheres exposed to intense radiation and stellar winds. This is not a statistical fluke. It is a sign of chemical disequilibrium, a state where inputs and outputs are being constantly balanced by an active process. Importantly, this does not automatically mean life. Volcanoes, photochemistry, and deep interior reactions can also drive disequilibrium. But the key realization is this. 
These planets are not chemically dead. They are dynamic systems, constantly processing energy and matter in ways that defy long-standing assumptions about atmospheric stability. Even more unsettling is where some of this chemical activity appears to be coming from. Several exoplanets observed by Webb receive far less stellar energy than would normally be required to sustain such complex atmospheric behavior. In other words, the star alone cannot explain what we are seeing. This forces scientists to consider internal energy sources on a much larger scale than previously assumed. Tidal heating, radioactive decay, and deep mantle chemistry suddenly move from secondary considerations to central players. Entire planets may be running on internal engines, slowly releasing heat and material over billions of years. This radically expands the number of worlds that could remain active long after their stars begin to fade. It also suggests that planetary evolution is far more independent from stellar evolution than our models ever allowed. At this point, a dangerous temptation emerges, labeling these signals as evidence of life. And this is where the scientific community has become extremely careful. Webb has not detected life. What it has detected are conditions that resemble the environments where life could operate without proving that it does. This distinction is critical. False positives have haunted astronomy before, from Martian canals to misinterpreted spectral lines. Scientists now face a paradox. The data is richer than ever, but so is the risk of overinterpretation. Every potential biosignature must be tested against dozens of non-biological explanations. And yet, the uncomfortable truth remains. If life does exist elsewhere, this is exactly what the earliest signs would look like. Subtle, ambiguous, chemically suggestive, but never definitive on their own. By now, one thing has become unmistakably clear. The universe does not respect the clean categories we built for it. Planets are not simply dead or alive, habitable or hostile. Atmospheres are not either stable or gone. Galaxies do not always form slowly. Black holes do not always grow patiently, and chemistry does not wait for perfect conditions. James Webb is showing us a universe that is opportunistic, fast, and remarkably efficient at creating complexity wherever energy and time intersect. This does not mean the cosmos is filled with life, but it does mean that the raw processes leading toward life are far more common than we ever dared to assume, and that realization fundamentally changes what it means to search for answers in the sky. At this stage, the most unsettling realization is not any single discovery, but the pattern that emerges when all of them are placed side by side. James Webb is not finding one strange planet or one odd atmosphere. It is finding the same kinds of anomalies repeating across completely different star systems, different planetary types, and radically different environments. Hot worlds, cold worlds, gas giants, super-Earths, planets around calm stars and planets around violent ones, all of them showing signs of unexpected complexity, atmospheres that refuse to collapse, chemistry that refuses to settle into equilibrium, internal energy sources that keep planets active long after they should have gone quiet. This repetition is crucial because randomness does not repeat itself so consistently. Patterns imply underlying rules, and those rules are not the ones we have been using for decades. Webb is quietly telling us that complexity is not an exception in the universe. It is a default outcome whenever matter, energy, and time are given enough room to interact. As these patterns became clearer, the scientific community did something unusual. Instead of rushing toward dramatic claims, it slowed down, carefully, deliberately, because everyone involved understands what is at stake. The chemical signatures Webb is detecting sit dangerously close to what we would expect from biological processes, but expectation is not evidence. Methane alongside carbon dioxide, long-lived disequilibrium, internal energy driving surface, and atmospheric renewal, all of this can be produced by non-biological mechanisms under the right conditions. And yet, this is exactly why the moment is so tense. For the first time, astronomy is brushing against a boundary where the data is no longer comfortably abstract. It is suggestive, ambiguous, teasing. Webb is not shouting life, but it is whispering something far more unsettling. The universe keeps building environments where life would not be surprising. And that is a very different statement. For decades, the search for life beyond Earth followed a narrow path, 
Find Earth-like planets around sun-like stars at just the right distance with just the right temperature. James Webb has shattered that strategy. What it is revealing instead is a universe where potential does not cluster around rare, perfect conditions, but spreads across a wide spectrum of worlds. Planets that are too hot still maintain chemistry. Planets that are too cold still generate energy. Planets that should be stripped bare somehow hold on to thick atmospheres. The implication is staggering. The question is no longer how many Earths are out there, but how many paths toward complexity exist. And once you ask that question, the numbers stop being comforting. They grow very large, very quickly. By the time all these discoveries are taken together, the word unimaginable takes on a very precise meaning. It does not mean aliens, civilizations, or definitive proof of life. It means that the universe is operating on a level of creative efficiency we never accounted for. James Webb is showing us that planets do not need ideal conditions to become interesting, that chemistry does not need gentle environments to become complex, and that time does not need billions of calm years to produce structure. The unimaginable is not that life exists elsewhere. The unimaginable is that the universe seems almost designed to try, again and again, in places we dismissed, under conditions we ruled out, with mechanisms we are only now beginning to understand. And at this point, the data leaves us with one unavoidable realization. We are no longer asking whether the universe can produce complexity. We are watching it do so in real time across the galaxy. So where does this leave us? After following James Webb's discoveries across planets, atmospheres, galaxies, and chemical systems that refuse to behave the way they should, one truth becomes impossible to ignore. The universe is not cautious. It does not wait for perfect conditions. It does not limit complexity to narrow zones or rare worlds. It experiments everywhere, relentlessly. And what Webb has uncovered is not a single shocking discovery, but a new pattern that forces us to rethink how reality itself works. For years, we framed the search for meaning in the cosmos around a simple question. Is there life out there? James Webb is quietly telling us that this question may have been too small. What we are seeing instead is a universe filled with active chemistry, persistent energy sources, resilient atmospheres, and worlds that refuse to become inert. Even when conditions appear hostile, complexity finds a way to survive, to adapt, and to continue evolving. That does not mean life is everywhere, but it does mean that the road toward life is far wider, far more forgiving, and far more common than we ever allowed ourselves to believe. And that is why this moment feels so unsettling. Because once you accept what Webb is showing us, the silence of the universe no longer feels empty. It feels patient. The question is no longer whether the universe is capable of producing extraordinary outcomes. The question is how many of them we have already missed, simply because we were looking in the wrong way. James Webb has not given us all the answers. What it has done is far more powerful. It has forced us to admit that the unimaginable is not a future possibility. It is already happening. As Webb continues to observe, and as future missions build on what it has revealed, one thing is certain. The universe we thought we understood is gone. In its place is something far more dynamic, far more creative, and far more alive with potential than we ever dared to imagine. And this is only the beginning.